Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you're going to learn how to cut out stamped images. The stamped image we'll be cutting out is the ship that came in the Sending Good Thoughts Paper Pumpkin Kit, July 2022. When I get a paper pumpkin kit, I get so excited because I get a new stamp set and I just think of all the possibilities. When I saw the ship, it brought back some family memories. There'll be some surprises here at the end of this video when I share some projects with you and the family memory that this reminds me of with my grandfather. So when I saw the ship, I thought there's so many possibilities just using this as a creative element for your cards. So let's get started. I'm gonna stamp the image. I wanna start from start to finish. Let me just tilt my camera. And you're going to just take some ink and just stamp this image. Now it is a pretty big image. So you're gonna use a stamping block D with your, this is your stamping block D or the stamping block that came with your first paper pumpkin kit. If you're not a subscriber yet, you do get a free gift. You get a stamping block when you subscribe. And then after that, you can use it for all your future kits. I just put the flat side up, mount it on to the stamping block. Now I'm gonna take, even though the stamping spot that came with this is pretty cute, it's a pretty light color, and I did use it for some of my ships, but I think the Knight of Navy came out much better. It is a color that will be really good for a ship. So I'm gonna use Knight of Navy. And I will show you later how I used Bermuda Bay for some of my ships. I also used the ink colors and many other colors. I think I did ships in about five different colors. So before you stamp it, you're going to tap, tap, tap to get your ink wet. But before you stamp it onto your basic white, I want to move the basic white away and just stamp it onto this scrap paper first. Because when you first, like after you wash your stamp, you want to get it all inked up. It's photopolymer, so it has a little bit of, it's like plastic, right? So it, ha it has to absorb the ink a little bit. When you get a clear, crisp image, or pretty close, like that's really good. You can see the bottom of the ship is really good. Then you can put your paper down and stamp onto your paper. So first get your ink to absorb into your plastic. Okay, so now again, tap, 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 and then onto your paper. Now, don't go too close to the edge because that one might not even scan that well. So let's go ahead and put some a little bit further from the edge. When you get too close to the edge, sometimes the scanner doesn't pick it up. Ooh la la, that's a good one. Nice and crisp. And we'll just do another one down here. And let's see, oh, let's just do a couple more for good measure. Let's see, because I don't really like that one. We're gonna do, we'll do one here. That way I'm not even going to select that one. You're going to see what I mean by making a selection. Nor will I even use my pencil trick on that one. So there we go. So I have four ships. Hold it there for a couple seconds to let the ink absorb in. If you're not getting good results like that, it's because the stamping spots are pretty juicy in your paper pumpkin kit. And this, it's kind of like you have to condition them, let them dry out a little bit, and use them up a little bit before you get smooth images. I just tend to, I just like to use a full-on, like a, a full stamping pad so you can use black too or any other color poppy prey is a good color to use because that's a um one of the coordinating colors in this kit the coordinating colors in this kit are on the back here so if that helps you figure out what colors to make your ships if you want to coordinate with the kit but i also used ink colors which didn't coordinate at all i have about nine projects to share with you so i have it, the coordinating colors are balmy blue basic gray bermuda bay fresh freesia pacific point and poppy prayed so i did stamp some things in pacific point Copy prayed for the actual projects that I'm working on. All right, so next you want to do, this is gonna, this is called the pencil trick because when you look at these stamped image, you're gonna see that they're gaps. And without using the pencil trick, it's gonna take this, it's gonna, it's gonna scan in this as one piece, the bottom of your ship, and it's gonna scan in the mast as another part of your ship because there's a gap. And yes, it can determine a gap that small. The scan and cut is really, really good at determining gaps. Now, if you want to also do, there's a message in the bottle. You can you can cut cut that out, your little seahorse. I just used this and the seaweed for background and this little piece for the background parts. I didn't cut those out, but you can cut out things that small if you want to. So anyway, for the pencil trick, you're going to take your pencil and you're going to enclose the gaps. So you need to put a little line here. Now, what that'll do is when it goes around, it's going to make this look like one image. You're going to do it over here too. So do it so that this whole ship becomes one image. I'm going to put that closer up so you can see it. If you don't do this, you're not going to have good results with this ship. 
And the ship is, it's just such a great card element all on its own. You don't even need anything else. Just a little bit of embellishment, you know, it's an embellishment, a little bit of background stuff, and you are good to go with a ship this cool. So there you go. That's it. That's the pencil trick in a nutshell. We're not going to do it to this one because that got a little messed up. When you, Whenever you do your first image, it gets a little bit messed up, I think. Open up your scanning cut. Put your mat on there. Oops, something fell inside. <laughs> my little, my little thing, my little stylus fell inside. Now don't, e later we're going to erase it, but don't, e you can use the pen tell eraser. Don't use, don't use the red eraser to erase your marks. Because that'll leave a mark on your paper. So I'm going to put this on. And when you, even if you're going to use tape to help you, right, when you're, even if you're going to use tape to help you put this paper on, like to help keep it in place, which I might use later, washi tape. You don't want to use it now because you don't want to cover up these registration marks when you're scanning. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load the mat. I'll show you how I did that in a minute when I tilt my camera, but I need to do that so it doesn't fall off my table when I move my machine. It's also talking about an update being available, but I'm not going to mess with the update, but I'll show you, I'll show you that as well. All right, so I've loaded my mat. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt my camera. Let's see. You can see lots of ships on my table. My ship has come sailing in. So, you, so there is an update for your scan and cut. It wasn't there yesterday, so there's an update available. But don't mess with that now because it's gonna. If I mess with that now, the update, it's gonna, it's gonna take it and install the update. And to do that, you're just gonna click on this and update it wirelessly. But I'm not doing that right now because it'll then restart my machine and all this other jazz and all that jazz. All right, so we're going to turn on your machine. You see pattern and scan. You're going to click on scan because we want to scan the ships. And the one that you're going to select is direct cut. Okay, we're going to directly cut these. Out. I'm using SDX 125. You can use any of the models of your machine that say scan and cut, not design and cut. But when they say scan and cut, what I'm showing you will work on any model of the scan and cut. Hit, click on direct cut because we're going to directly cut these out. Come on. It's just... It actually slipped a little bit. There you go, direct cut. Now it's asking where do you want to store the image? And I want to store it on my machine and as opposed to storing it on Canvas Workspace. I'm just storing it on my machine. It's temporary storage. My my paper that I'm using is 12 by 6. Late Earlier I did a whole sheet of 12 by 12. You'll see how many ships that I did. No, it doesn't work on a Cricut because the Cricut is not a scan and cut. There is something called print and cut and there's other modes. If you had an image on a Cricut, it would work, but no, the whole, this is scan and cut. This machine scans and cuts out stamped images or pattern paper. Scan, that's the operative word. Your, your, your Cricut does other things, which they claim scans, but it's a nightmare. And I mean, maybe it isn't lately, but it was for me whenever I tried to do certain things like print and cut and um, take a photo of something and cut it. It was like, it was worse than a nightmare. Anyway, so let's go ahead and click on this. The scan and cut is awesome at scanning and cutting anything that it sees. And we're going to click on this little button here, and we're going to click on 12 by 12, and we're going to go to, we're going to do the 12 by 6. Okay, we want it to be 12 by 6. So now, that's because I only have the, the white part at the top. Now, now, even if I had stamped these in color, I'm still going to click black and white recognition mode. That's this. Don't click, don't select color recognition mode. It takes too long. And you don't need it because we have good contrast. Click OK and click Start. But I'm going to turn off my light real quick. So before it, you scan it in, make sure you turn out that light. I have an overhead crafting light. It's called an OTT light, O-T-T. Great brand of light. Uh, let, it's one word, though, OTT light, one word. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my light again. But it shines in light sideways onto your machine. It will mess up your scanning process. So you want to make sure you turn off that light and leave just your overhead lights on when you're scanning. I turned it back on now, the art light. It's a good crafting light, good video light. Click OK. Now, we have a beautiful, it did a beautiful job already. You can see that it already outlined my, my ships as one. Okay, my ships are one. Now, if I want this little outline distance, though, this little white part around the edges, then I want to put an, an outline distance around the edge. So first, let's make a selection of just the four ships that I, that one, it didn't do because... I didn't use the pencil trick. You could see the line. Let me get and zoom in. The one that I didn't use the pencil trick on, it has a line here and a line up there. 
We just want the ones that I did use the pencil trick on. We want these four ships. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay and just select the bottom part, right? The bottom part of the image. I don't wanna to get too close to this mast. Maybe, maybe like that, cause I'm still gonna put an outline distance around it. So now we click on preview and we have the part we've selected, the part we want to cut out. And now we're going, and you can ignore object size if there's any stray bits of dirt around the mat. But now we're going to click okay and we're going to put an outline distance around these. Okay, of 0.04. That's that little white, white space around the bottom, okay, or around the sides. Okay, we're going to click OK. We're going to click OK, and we're going to cut these. Now, we don't need to worry about that. See? Great shapes. Awesome. Love it. Perfect. I'll show you my success rate when I did like a half a sheet earlier. All but two came out. And I'm going to click Cut. Now, it doesn't matter that my light's on now because the, the light only mattered when I was scanning. It doesn't matter now that I'm cutting. And at this point, you can give it a rub to make sure your paper doesn't move. You can tape up all the sides all you want. You can use painter's tape or washi tape. Like I tend to use this kind of washi tape and put it on there. Do whatever you want now that the, when, once it scans, you don't need to worry about covering those registration marks. I just give it a little rub like this. I don't like my paper to slip away. Slip sliding away. All right, here's what I'm talking about earlier. Look at my, my good success rate. I had all these ships and half a sheet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I had twelve out of fourteen. That's a really good success rate. When I was doing this earlier with just half a sheet, just to show you that. And if you can either cut the other ones out or punch them out, you can go back and cut the other ones out later. But sometimes I don't, you know, I don't bother. All right. So now you get now you have, it says finish cutting, right? And you can click OK, and we can unload the mat. Right, that's this button here. This is how I loaded and unloaded the mat. So we're going to do that, and we're going to erase while they're on the mat. So let's just go ahead and do that. And then now, okay, it unloaded, and now I'm going to show you this part. Let me see if I can tilt this now. Tilt. You're going to lift this up, and you're going to... My paper's sticking a little bit because I was using some extra sticky on my mat. So there you go. You got your little images and then you can use your little spatula or you can bend the mat to get these off. Yes. Don't you love ship Sharon? I'm going to, I was actually going to erase them while it's on the mat, but I decided I'm going to erase them on a, um, on my little, I meant a different kind of mat. I don't mean this mat because this, this will get like little eraser pieces sticking on it. I meant this mat. <laughs> this is like a, I forget what these are called. These are little you get these on our website, on my Stampin' Up! store. These are like little grid, oh, it's called grid paper, not a mat, grid paper. So before you use the ships, I mean, you don't really even have to erase them. You know, when I used them earlier and I forgot, I didn't even notice, but if you want to use the ships, probably erase those little marks. I have an electronic eraser too. If you're new to the Scan and Cut and don't ha have one yet, please use the link in my description of this video and get yourself a Scan and Cut. I might not put the link there yet, but I will. Uh, I know one of the questions I get asked all the time after doing these videos is like, what model are you using? I'm using the SDX 125. And if you can't find that, it's because I'm using the 125E. I have both the 125 and the 125E. E is an Edward, but it, they are pretty much virtually the same. Um, just as they just have a different model name. I don't really notice any difference between the two models, but... It's kind of like your industry standard for scanning cuts right now. The 125E. Okay, so at this point, I took a couple more chips and tricks. Let's go back. If you wanted to add another layer to these ships, you would... While your while your mat was still, I mean, you could while your paper still you change the paper out in your mat, and you could use like another layer by saying you want 0.08, and you could put another layer around your ship. I didn't do that for my projects, but you can do that. Okay, I need to raise my I need to raise my camera up so I can show you something. I told you I had a surprise for you. And when I do my paper pumpkin video today, I'm going to show you projects I created with this paper pumpkin kit. 
sending good thoughts. I have lots of projects. Right now, I'm just showing you the ones I created with the ships. But when I do this video, my brother is going to come on. He remembers my grandfather more than I do because he's older than me. And my, my grandfather died when I was young. But this is, this is a family thing that was passed on to me. And I really need to show it to you because it's pretty darn awesome that what my grandfather created. Voila, it is a ship in a bottle. And it's even better than a bottle. I think I need to raise this up a little more. It's better than a bottle because it's one of those really old timey light bulbs. My grandfather was born in the 1800s. <laughs> and this was his hobby. He, he's from Germany, he was a merchant marine. And this over here in the background, my brother was telling me, let me see if I can turn this light a little bit so you can see it better. My brother was telling me that this house in the background there was my grandmother's house in Germany, where she came from. And then this picture here, I'll try to shine some light on it. It's this picture here is, is my, is his children. My, my dad, his twin brother. So my dad and uncle Ralph, my uncle John and my uncle George and my aunt Dot is in the middle. My aunt Dot is the the female, so she had she had four brothers. So that's he put his children on the ship, and my brother told me a lot of things about how he watched my grandfather create these ships in the bottle. Like for instance, you have to put down the mast. You have to when you you have to put this down like flat when you get it in there, and then you have to pull use some strings to pull up the mast. And then over here, he put Noah's Ark. You see Noah's Ark back there. Maybe I'll have to try to see if I can get the lighting better on this. So there's there's some there's some kinds of things in the back. There's like a not in the back in the bottom, and it's almost like a some kind of putty for the water. And then he did a diorama in the back, and he has the different flags on the ships and all the and the mast. And it's he's using balsa wood that he carved out and, and did different things with the balsa wood. So you know, he he influenced his his merchant marine days, influenced his crafting. My dad later joined the Navy, so I'm sure he was influenced by my grandfather's love of the sea. And then I ended up working for the Navy at different times and working and teaching children from dependents of the Navy. So it's like, and, and lived anywhere on islands too. So that is my little memory of how these ships, when I saw this, I immediately took a card out to my brother who's here. And he's, I said, hey, what does this remind you of? I'm going to show you the first card I'm going to show you here. He said, that's Grandpa. He goes, Grandpa ships in the bottle. I said, exactly. This is what it reminds me of. And he's like, who's the card for? And I'm thinking, um, it's probably going to be for you later because of what he said as soon as I handed it to him. It's definitely for someone in my family because those ships in the bottle are a memory for all of us. And I ended up with that one. My, you know, my different siblings ended up. I remember going there as a child and seeing all these ships in the bottle all over the shelves. So different family members ended up with different ones. But what a cool craft. What a cool hobby. So this is what you can do with your ships in the bottle. You put them on a wobble spring. Wobble springs, you can get from Amazon, and they're on. They're in the description of this video. Just click the little arrow beneath the video, and you'll see the descriptions where you can get the wobble springs to, to make your ship in the bottle, like, come, come alive. And the kit has, like, calls for three seagulls, but I thought I'm going to save the third seagull. This big seagull was a little too big for me, and it was blocking the ship. And I thought, no, the third seagull I'm going to use for some other kind of craft. So let me show you what else I did with this kit, um, or what I did with, I'm just, I'm going to first show you the cards. After I say hello, I'm going to show you the cards that I created straight from the kit, using the parts of the kit, and then I want to show you what I did using in colors and the ships. So, okay, Kathy was here first before I even got here. She said it looks like a great paper pumpkin kit. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Terry P. I love everything about this too, Yvonne. Yvonne's saying she loves this, loved everything about this paper pumpkin kit. This kit is like, I, I actually didn't even, I skipped the one before. I'm going to get back to the June one, but when I saw this, I'm excited. The July one. I'm doing my July video before my June video. Well, for a couple of reasons, but mainly because this excites me. And it's like I can relate to it. So, hello, Sandy from Texas. Just got out the bottles, coral, starfish, seahorse. Right. And so she's probably popping them all out. Gloria is saying she pops out all her pieces. And then she's coloring them. Okay, that's cool. Okay, Elaine is here. Hello, Elaine. Cheryl, Nola, hello again. Yeah, Cricket's a whole different machine, right, from a whole different company. Thank you, Nancy. And that's why Brothers Scan and Cut. I like it better, but of course they're different. I also have Crickets. I've had several, and, and they're different, way different. 
I mean, I probably can't even count how many I have. I think I have more crickets than I have scanning cuts, if you count throughout my life, because how long I've been using them. But they're way different. Hello, Sharon. Okay, we said Melissa, good. Uh, CM350 is fine, Cheryl. Just stick with what you got. Don't worry about it. Use what you have. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay, now let me show you. I'm going to keep saying hi. So this is another one. Well, I'm just showing you some things here. Another one that I created using the paper pumpkin kit. Okay, good. And... Right, thank you, Gloria, for your comment. Diana, hello, Diana. So what I did for this one is I used the timber embossing folder for the background of one of the basic gray paper pumpkin cards. And that's what I used. Okay, Sandy, Sandy said, your grandfather's craft is absolutely stunning. It is something to cherish. Now, my brother, who's here visiting, just walked in, and I'm asking him to come over and say a couple words about this bottle because he can remember when my grandfather was making this. So, Jerry, they can't see you, but they can see the bottle. So, there you go. Okay, so Grandpa was a Mercer Marine, and he used to sail on these. They called them clipper ships. So this was his hobby afterwards. He'd, he'd carve them out of balsa wood and uh, fiddle in the basement with them. So the mass would go in straight down, laying down this way. And then there's, if you could see the uh, the lines coming down from the mass through the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, on the end of the ship there with the holes. And then you pull them from underneath and pull them in. It would bring the mast up in place. And then he would use tweezers to get pictures on and different things like that. Awesome. Right. And you inherited his special tools. What were his special tools? So I, I was very concerned about the tools. I wanted them. And it turned out it was an old car antenna bent in two. And that was his tweezers, which he would use to take the ship and put them in, in this base of putty that's there. A car antenna. I love it. So you thought it was like this fancy schmancy tools because, you were going to yeah. get. And you ended up being with a car antenna with tweezers on the end. Hey, we use what we use what we have. So that is so cool, Jerry. Thank you. That was my brother Jerry. And You're more than welcome. More he got welcome. to actually see him he actually got to see him working on these in the basement when he was younger. And I got to see his granddaughter make cards. Exactly. When she was younger. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thank you. They're outside working on some projects. So they all became <laughs> I mean, mechanical or military they like all my brothers like a couple of them joined the military and a couple moved to alaska working with their on the pipelines and things so yes i think you're influenced by your family definitely for sure so here's another one of those cards and the ships and this is when i was telling you that my my bermuda bay this one right it's a bermuda bay so it was like it was very juicy so what I had to do is after I inked it up, I had to smear it with my fingers because it just got all bubbly. If you ever get ink that's bubbly, literally like bubbles in your ship, you can just smear it with your hand or like a sponge and it'll come out kind of vintage looking, which was what I, which I really like. Okay, so if you want to see these other cards I made with my paper pumpkin kit, you'll have to watch later today my paper pumpkin video because I want to stick with right now just the ones I made using the scan and cut because this is a scan and cut video. So I'm trying to just show you what you make with the ones you cut out as opposed to the ones you just stamp straight onto here. So after I was making all these ones with the coordinating colors from the kit, and they come with envelopes and everything, and I thought, like, again, this kit's fantastic. I did some alternate projects, stamped up the little seahorse back there. Then I said, well, what do I have a lot of? Well, I have a lot of ink colors. So I decided to do some things with my ink colors and make some ink color ships. So if you recall, the five ink colors are Tahitian Tide, Tahitian Tide, a uh, Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, Starry Sky, and Orchid Oasis. So there's the Orchid Oasis. This color, this card has all five of those colors in one card, all five of the ink colors. I used the Glimmer paper. I have a lot of it because I did a recent bingo and a recent tea boutique workshop. And so I had a lot of these ink colors that I was working with, ink color designer series paper. I had a lot of ink color Glimmer paper. These are, I'm using here the, these are called the, these little, things. Let me see what those are called. I'm trying to think. Stylish stylish shapes dies is what they're called. And so I inked up around the edges. So that's that card. And you, again, just pop it up with dimensionals and you have something cool to do with your ship. Here's another thing you can do with your ship. Designer series paper, 
cutting out a shape. I use a little stitched image. If you want to know about stitching, I, I think stitching works better with metal dies. You can do stitching on your scan and cut, which I've taught in my courses, but it works better with metal dies when you do stitching. Here's just a, two, a couple colors. You got Orchid Oasis and you got the Parakeet Party. That's it. And, and maybe this one might have been Starry Sky, like the darker color. Yeah. Three colors. So three colors. One color of ink, the darker color for ink, two colors of paper. And you can do a lot with just that ship element. Here's when you could take some, some more ships and just kind of add to your ships. So this one, I have a lot going on here. I use the Hive 3D embossing folder. I put strips of ink color designer series paper on the back of here. I embossed the whole thing. I, I attached them to vellum and embossed the whole thing. Then I framed this whole thing. I have a big opening, a gap in the frame where I, this is a little, this, this here is a piece of designer series paper. And I stuck this right onto the card base. So there's a lot going on in this one, but it's the ship still that make it. Even though there's all that embossing going on and all the ink colors, the ship still makes it. Okay, so those are my three fully ink color cards. And then these two is ink colors along with Crush Carry. I knew that Crush Carry was another color that would coordinate with this. So I thought because of the, because Crush Carry is inside my tea boutique. And here's ones where I use three ships. This one, I used a piece of Orchid Oasis cardstock. And I used the Rays of Light background stamp. And I used three ships. Now, all these sentiments, if you're wondering, can't wait to see you. Sending good thoughts. Wishing you all the best. All from the Paper Pumpkin Kit. Nothing new here. Every, every stamp you see, right, is all from this kit. This is all what you could do with one kit. And you saw how I used the seaweed, or not the seaweed, the little, yeah, I did seaweed and seahorses back there. I mean, just everything's from this one kit. So you don't have to go far when you're looking. And then you could pop some ships up and lay some other ones down flat. And there's in colors. So this is Tahitian Tide, Starry Sky, and Sweet Sorbet. And again, Tahitian Tide, Starry Sky, and Sweet Sorbet. So you can use the three ships together. And you can either let the sun shine through or not. It's a great background stamp. I've done an Ink It Up series on it. And I think I might add some opal rounds to some of my cards before I photograph them. Or some other embellishments. So lots of stuff going on with this kit. I'm going to do a video today because I'm almost done with all the projects from my, from my kit of what you can make with this paper pumpkin kit. And I'll be, I'll show you some, some little boxes too. Now this card here, just as I end here, it was just, I didn't have another, I needed an in color background and I didn't, I needed one quick and I didn't have time to go digging out the card stock and make another kit. So I just used one of these tea boutique cards and envelopes. I mean, yes, the flowers are on there, but I'm just showing you because of the background, this part is the plain part, had little dots around it. Can you see that? So you can use the cards from your paper pumpkin kit, which are already made for you. They're pretty good quality. They're not as strong as our regular card stock, but they're made for you. Or you can go further and use, I'm going to put some white inside these, or you can use card stock and put like a white piece in the inside of these. So and then you're going to have a much thicker, heavier card. It might go over an ounce when you give an envelope to someone, over an ounce, and then it might cost you like 20 more cents to, to mail it, but that's all. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and this tutorial. Last tip is just go back. I wanted to make sure my, and go back and you can add, go here if you want, this is your last tip. If you want to add that outline distance of another, just increase it up to 0 0.8, 0 0.08. Click OK. I'm not doing that for mine. You're going to get a bigger, put a different color paper in there and you can get a big, a nice outline for another layer for the back of your ship. You want to do it again? You want to carry it in a third outline? Maybe gold color, some glimmer paper? Put 0.12, do it again, cut it out in another sheet. And you'll get nice layered ships, and you can even do more with the nice layered ships. All right, let's see if there's any more comments to catch you before. Thank you, Nettie. Thank you, Terry, Gloria. Okay, Paper Pumpkin video. I'll announce it in my VIP group, my Paper Pumpkin Kit video. Okay, Linda's here from Stamp, Cut, and Create. Awesome. She's on my team. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Sandy, thank you. Sandy, about my grandfather's craft. And I'm glad my brother was like alive to actually see him crafting on this in his basement. That was really cool. That's why I asked him to say a couple words. All right, see you later. That's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. Have a great day.